Hello class! I officially welcome you to Understanding the Self or Jack 1 to 2. As promised, here is the video lecture on the first module. I would like to apologize before I proceed with my discussion for the late update or the late upload of this video lecture. Class, I am a very busy person. I have my personal matters. I have my subjects in the department, and I also have my administrative tasks. I know that is not an excuse because, well, a busy person has always time for everything, but do understand that I am not a superhuman. Anyway, I promise that I'm going to do my best in order to supplement your learning and to provide adequate knowledge for you to learn a lot on this subject. Now, before I go further, I would like to appreciate everybody for hanging in there despite the situation that we have right now, pandemic, and then of course, the online class. Everybody is not used to it, but thank you, thank you very much for hanging in there. I know that you are very hungry for knowledge and I know na nagigigil na kayo, gusto nyo nang um, mag-physical class tayo. However, hindi natin pwedeng ipilit yung gusto natin kasi of course, safety first. But the thing is, um, let's look at the positive side. Um, let's see this situation as a room for our growth and development. Now, of course, um, let me give you a, an overview about this course. This course class is really, really interesting because we are going to talk about you. Yes, you. Your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, and even the very nature of your soul. But remember class, that all depends on you because no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try to discuss all these things, but if you don't help yourself, if you are not willing to embody all the knowledge that I'm going to share to you, then I guess it's pointless. Okay? Although that understanding the self is a lifetime process, but I hope that this course would help you in presenting yourself, in handling yourself better. Anyway, class, this is lesson one, the self from various philosophical perspectives. Now, at the end of the lesson, I am expecting you to explain the ideas and concepts of the self that are presented by different philosophers. Identify the notions of the self from the points of view of the various philosophers. Distinguish various philosophical perspectives of the self. Demonstrate appreciation of understanding the self and elaborate how knowing oneself leads to wisdom. Now, let's have the first philosopher in our list, and that is Socrates. Class, have you ever met someone who made an impact in your life to the point that whenever you make important decisions, you always consider that someone? For others, maybe it's their parents. No, sa iba naman, baka sabihin nila yung mga significant others nila. In line with Socrates, he was like that during his time. He influenced a lot of people. In fact, Socrates was hailed as the wisest man in Athens, Greece. Ano kaya yung meron kang Socrates class? During his time, people in Athens, Greece were merely existing. Naglalakad dahil may mga paa. Kumakain kasi kapag hindi kumain, tutunog ang mga sikmura. Humihinga kasi may hangin na available sa paligid. At kapag hindi huminga, malamang baka mamatay yung tao. We cannot call it living because according to the wisest man, healed in Athens, Greece, and that was Socrates himself, living is about finding purpose and meaning. Parang yung mga tao, class, binubuhay lang nila yung buhay nila kasi may buhay sila. 
they did not see the value of their lives. No? They were not even curious of their origin. They were not curious kung saan nagmula yung mundo. Bakit may araw? Bakit may buwan? They were not curious of the mysteries of the world. And the worst thing is that they claim that they are intelligent. They were very contented class of this idea to the point that they stopped doubting. They stopped being curious. No? So, they were just very arrogant, claiming that they are wise, but in reality, they were not. No? Because of this, Socrates told himself na better pa pala ako. At least, I know that I know nothing. I know those things that I don't know and those things that I know. And because of this remark of Socrates' class, no, the pursuit of wisdom was first triggered. Remember, class, that the moment we question and we doubt what we know, that is also the very beginning of us finding answers and hence pursuing wisdom. Kasi, class, hindi naman tayo magahanap ng solusyon kung walang problema. Diba? That is actually common sense, right? Now, the thing is, along the process of finding solutions to our problems, unti-unting nadadagdagan yung mga kaalaman natin. And of course, unti-unting nadadagdagan din yung mga experiences natin. These are the things that we use in attaining wisdom. This was Socrates' motivation in his philosophy. More importantly, Socrates believed on the idea that we need to know the very nature of our soul. Ang sabi niya pa nga, know thyself. Kilalanin mo yung sarili mo. Because how can you expect class to know the universe, the bigger universe, if you don't even know yourself as part of that universe? No? So, this led Socrates to his theory of dualism. Anyway, in relation to Socrates' perspective of the self, he proposed the theory dualism. Dualism class explicates that aside from our physical body, we possess an immortal soul. Socrates said that reality itself is made up of two dichotomous realms, the physical realm and the ideal realm. Let's discuss first the physical realm. Physical realm class is changeable, is transient, and is imperfect. In fact, everything in this world class belongs to the physical realm. Everything that you see, hear, taste, smell, and feel belongs to this realm. Bakit? Kasi lahat ng nandito sa mundong ito class, temporary and it's not even long lasting. Yung mga trees sa paligid natin, yung mga animals class, nawawala yan, no? Kapag may mga kalimidad, no? Kapag nag for example, even yung buhay ng tao class, nawawala. ba? Diba? And because of that class, it is part of the physical realm. Again, it's changeable, transient, and imperfect. On the other hand, class, ideal realm is unchanging, eternal, immortal, and perfect. No? So, from the word itself, ideal. No? Ideal means on the zenith. Perfection itself. No? Mas mataas pa sa sinasabi natin na excellent no the very idea of truth goodness and beauty although no na nakakapagsay tayo ng example sa physical world but the perfection no the perfect form of these ideas only exists in the ideal realm why it's because for example um yung beauty class right 
we can say that a person is beautiful in our eyes as of the moment. But that person cannot be beautiful all the time. Right? That person cannot be true all the time. That person cannot be good all the time. And because of that, it manifests inconsistency. It manifests class change. No? And because of that, it is not perfect. That is why only the idea of truth, goodness, beauty, etc. exists in the ideal realm. Now, according to Socrates' class, our soul is the perfect example of the thing that exists in the ideal realm. According to him, class, even mawala, no, or mamatay yung physical na katawan natin, our soul will last forever. No, it can survive the death of the body, but never the soul. No? Kung iisipin nating mabuti, class, namatay si Socrates. Yes, that's true. Ilang centuries na yung nakaraan. But kung iisipin natin, hanggang ngayon, yung wisdom, yung contribution ni Socrates, buhay na buhay pa rin. Right? And because of that, we can say, wow, the soul of Socrates is still alive. Every soul in this world aims for genuine happiness. In fact, according to Socrates, this is the highest goal of man. We want to seek purpose and find meaning in our lives because we want to be happy at the end of the day. However, as we strive for wisdom and perfection, as we struggle to be happy at the end of the day, we are also inhabited by our own imperfections, by our own weaknesses. No? Not just our own weaknesses, but also the imperfections of the world itself. No? So, a very good example of that class is discouragement. For example, um, calamities, right? Uh, yung COVID, that is a very good example of the imperfections of the world. Second philosopher class was the student of Socrates, and yes, that's Plato, no? Um, during the time of Socrates' class, flashback muna tayo, he was not able to publish most of his works because he was executed, no? I told you a while ago that Socrates kasi challenged the system, no? Challenged the government. Sige, sabihin na lang natin na government. And because of that class, he was seen as a threat to the society, no? So imagine if there is um, a group of power, powerful people and then kinalaban mo yan sila. Of course, they would try to do everything in order for you to be removed in the picture and yan yung nangyari kang Socrates class. He was executed and yes, because of that hindi na i-publish yung mga trabaho niya but Plato as the diligent student no yung ginawa niya, he did all the note taking so yung nangyari, he continued the legacy of Socrates no so Plato class was a committed no a committed student of Socrates so he also had the same belief no so naniniwala din siya doon sa dualism ni Socrates however class he also recognized the inherent difficulties with this view he asked how is it possible that the self remains the same when it is obvious that every self is defined by a process of continual change and evolution remember that Socrates um, said that the human soul is immortal and perfect. Diba no? It's unchanging. So, ibig sabihin, kapag sinilang yung tao, kung ano yung soul meron siya, yun na yun. Hindi na yun siya mag-change kahit na tumanda pa siya. No? So, um, according to Plato, it is impossible. Why? Kasi, if yung katawan ng tao, yung physical body natin, class, nagbabago, no, for example, yung old cells natin, no, they are parang 
they die and then of course will eventually be replaced by new ones. Yung bata class hindi yan forever na magiging bata, no? Hindi yan pwed, uh, hindi yan forever na magiging um baby. So eventually he or she would become an adult in his own time. And because of this class, Plato said that whatever experience by our physical body is also experienced by our soul, no? So, kung nagbabago yung physical body, then it is impossible for the human soul to not change at all. ba? Diba? So, ito yung sinasabi niya na the human soul cannot be part of the ideal realm. The human soul cannot be perfect. No? It would change along with the change of the um physical body no so even though that our soul strives to become immortal and perfect at the end of the day but still since um it is inhabited by the imperfections of the physical body then of course the soul itself will become imperfect no but still no the st- still our soul aims to be um, immortal. So, in fact, it is actually manifested in our prizing of our children. So, kapag sinasabi natin, class, na prizing of our children, ito yung um, pinapalaki, inaalagaan natin yung mga anak natin. No, we are rearing our children because we want our children to continue our leg- legacy. Kung ano yung nasimula natin, sila yung magko-continue so that even um, even if mawala na tayo sa mundo na ito, even if we will die no, in the future, um, masasabi natin na we have contribution and because of that, um, we will still be rem- uh, remembered by the society despite of our death. Then, Plato presented his concept of the three-part soul or self, the chariot analogy. If you're looking in the picture right now, you can see three elements. The charioteer, the winged noble horse, and the winged wild horse. The charioteer class is represented by our reason. In other words, our rationality. So this is our divine essence that enables us to think deeply, make wise choices, and achieve a true understanding of eternal truths. It is what makes us apart from animals. While animals are bound by their instincts all the time, we are dictated by our intellect and our ability to reason out. Second one, we have the physical appetite or the winged noble horse. This pertains to our basic biological needs such as hunger, thirst, and sexual drive. So, these are actually class our um, instinctive attributes, something that we already possessed when we were born in this world. So, nung isinilang tayo, inherit na siya sa atin class. Diba? So, um, kapag yung baby, hindi mo na siya kailangan na turuan, na umiyak ka kapag nagugutom ka. Or say, for example, kapag nauuhaw ka, um, kailangan umiyak ka ha. Hindi mo na siya kailangan diktahan. Kasi it's, it's already an automatic response. Lastly, we have the winged wild horse which is symbolized no, or which symbolizes spirit or passion. This is our basic emotions such as love, anger, ambition, aggress- aggressiveness, and empathy. So when we say empathy class, this is our ability to um to be in the shoes of other people. Ne? So um this also pertains to our values and virtues, right? Now these elements are in a dynamic relationship with one another and sometimes class they are also in conflict with one another. Remember that this chariot analogy is a representation of our self itself, no? So, ibig sabihin, if these elements are sometimes in conflict, we also experience this in our own. 
For example, um, have you ever experienced na kung saan you are in a, you are in a dilemma, no? Ano yung susundin sa mga choices mo? You need to pick only one. Ano yung susundin mo? Is it the right thing to do or is it the thing that you badly want to do? No, gustong gusto mong gawin yung bagay na yun. Um, kahit na magalit yung mga tao sa paligid mo, kahit na mali siya, gusto mo pa rin gawin yun. Right? So, this is this is a manifestation of the conflict. No? Conflict ng tatlong elements na presence sa chariot analogy. Now, the thing is, in order to control the physical appetite and our spirit or passion, um, our reason class, our rationality should be in control. So, siya yung referee sa dalawa. No? Siya yung nagmimediate. Siya yung nagmimaintain ng balance. And, of course, if our reason, if our rationality dominates, then, we can assure genuine happiness. Gaya ng sabi nga ni Socrates, no? Na pinaniniwalaan naman ng estudyante niya, na si Plato, na the goal of man is genuine happiness. The third one we have, Aristotle. I know for a fact that you've heard of his name many times because Aristotle is very popular across disciplines. He's not only present in natural sciences such as physics, mathematics, biology, chemistry, etc., etc., but also in social sciences such as anthropology, social, etc., Aristotle class was a student of Plato who was a student of Socrates. So, Socrates taught Plato and then Plato taught Aristotle. However, instead of doing the same thing as, as Plato, Aristotle rejected dualism. Yes, he rejected it. Although it would be easier to assume that he would embrace it, but sadly, he did not. In fact, he proposed um, the same the same or quite similar uh, view and he called it hylomorphism. So hylomorphism explicates that a being is a compound of form and matter. So hylo no from the word hyl which means form and morph which means matter. Now, matter class is the common stuff that makes up the universe. Well, form is the essence of a thing that makes it what it is. This is what distinguished between living and non-living things. Aristotle emphasized that you cannot separate matter and form. It is impossible to, to separate them. So, when you combine matter and form class, you create a form matter or substance. So, all the familiar things that we see in the world are called substance or substances. Again, you cannot separate matter and form because um, if you try to separate it or just the idea of separating it, um, it loses its very essence, right? Um, that is exactly the reason of Aristotle that... Um, Kagaya ng hindi pwedeng i-separate yung matter and form class, we also cannot separate our body and the soul. So, the matter class is a representation of our physical body, while the form class is the representation of our soul. Our soul class is the very essence of our being. You cannot separate our physical body and our soul because according to Aristotle, it's, it's actually... Um, it's it's actually impossible, no? Because our phys physical body cannot exist without the existence, of course, of our soul, and our soul cannot exist without our physical body. So they they exist or they live um, codependently, no? So hindi sila pwedeng paghiwalayin. That is the view of Aristotle. Fourth one class is Saint Augustine. The first theologian. So, theologian is the one who pursues the study of God. What he did is that he integrated Platonic ideas with Christianity. So, like Plato, he believed on the existence of the physical body and the soul. So, physical body and soul 
exist separately, right? Now, the thing is, as his thinking matured, he began to view the self as more unified. So, the body is the spouse of the soul. So, the body needs the soul and the soul needs the body in order for them to complete each other. So, they are united. Now, he also believed, class, that the very goal of man is um, happiness. However, his concept of happiness is a bit different in a way that genuine happiness, according to him, can be only achieved with God. No? So, yung sinasabi na niya na even though na yung soul natin is mamamatay dito sa mundong ito, our souls are capable of reaching immortality when we follow the commandments of God. And of course, if mapofollow tayo ng commandments of God, then basically, we will have the chance to live with God. No? So, eternal yun. Ibig sabihin, forever. So, yung sinasabi nila na, anong tawag dito? Um, immortal life after our death here on earth. So, yeah, that is the belief of Saint Augustine. Let's proceed with Rene Descartes. Rene Descartes' class is a rationalist. One that views that reason is the primary source of all knowledge and that only pure reasoning abilities can enable us to understand sense experience and reach accurate conclusion. So I already told you a while ago that one that distinguishes us from animals is our intellect and our rationality. So in order to justify that we are really unlike animals who are bound by their instinct, we need to use our reasoning ability. Now, according to Rena Descartes' class, it would make us closer to the truth. Doubting would made would make us closer to the truth. Now, the question is, when do we usually doubt? Rena Descartes said that we usually doubt class you know, when we ask questions, when we are confused about something. Now, the next thing that we do is most likely um, we gather uh, answers to these questions, right? And the more we seek answers to our questions as, the more also that we learn, the more that we reason out. And say, for example, if we happen to arrive to a conclusion, it is not yet enough for us because we also gather evidences, more evidences in order to suffice. The conclusion that we come up with, no? Now, the thing is, according to Rene Descartes' class, as much as possible, we need to doubt all the time. Let's doubt everything that we have, even our own belief class. Again, doubting would lead us to the truth. Now, question is, question ko sa inyo class, how sure are you of your belief right now? How sure are you of your choices right now? Pagpili ng course, for example, is it your choice or is it your family's choice? Hmm? How sure are you of, of your decisions? No? Are you the type of person na go with the flow lang? Or are you the type of person who uses no? his intellect and his rationality? in order to decide for himself or herself. Hmm? So, yun yun. Again, according to Descartes, as much as possible, doubt everything in your surrounding because it would lead us to the truth. It would make us closer to the truth. You can even doubt yourself class. No? But according to Descartes class, even if, say, for example, you doubt yourself, no, it doesn't eradicate the fact that your self exists. In what way? Say, for example, um, say that you are doubting yourself. You cannot, um, you cannot deny that it's your doubtful self that exists. Tama? Hmm? You can even doubt that you are listening to my discussion today. No. How, how can you be so sure that you are not dreaming while listening to this one? That you are not hallucinating while listening to my discussion as of the moment, right? But despite that one, um, your 
uh, the idea that your doubtful self, that your, say, dreaming or hallucinating self still exists. So according to Decker's class, still you cannot lose your sense of self because the fact that you are thinking, that you are doubting, no, the fact that you are thinking about your doubtful self, the fact that you are thinking about your um, hallucinating or dreaming self, manifest the idea that your self exists. Being self-aware or self-conscious is integral to having a personal identity. Moreover, Descartes said that the very essence of ourselves is that we are thinking things. So the fact that we are thinking, it means that we have this sense of self. It means that we are existing despite our confusions doubts and questions we are still existing because we are having the, these thoughts and we are considering these thoughts now the thing is like plato and socrates Descartes also believe that our thinking self is different from our body so how is it similar yung soul para kang socrates tsaka kay plato class yun yung thinking self ni Descartes. so going back um, thinking self and body is different for Descartes. So, uh, magkaiba sila. However, they have intimate relationship, no? So, whatever that we are thinking, it affects our body. And the events with the body affects our line of thinking. Okay, let's move on to John Locke, who said that the self is consciousness. By the way, John Locke is an empiricist, one who views that sense experience is the primary source of all knowledge. So, kung yung kanina sa rationalism, na yung primary source of all knowledge is in reason, for an empiricist like John Locke, it's the sense experience. John Locke, as well, is also known for his tabula rasa. Ano ba itong tabula rasa class? So, according to Locke, uh, lahat tayo, when we were born, we were like blank sheets of paper which manifests our inexperience of the world. Now, as we grow and develop, as we explore our, our environment class, our blank sheet of paper was slowly written with um, our experiences. No? Now, According to Jean Parin, in order for us to understand our sense of self, our identity, we need to understand first, what does it mean to become a person? So he defines a person as a thinking, intelligent being who has the abilities to reason and reflect. No? So rationality. No? And someone who considers himself to be the same to be the same thing in different times and different places. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? So, for example, do you consider yourself no, as the person when you were in high school, when you were in kinder, the one who studied last night, the, the one who watched a movie or a K-drama last night, ikaw pa rin ba yun? Diba no? So, the same pa rin ba yan na person? Now, it is actually class possible through our consciousness. So, when we say consciousness, it is our uh, awareness that we are thinking, no? So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng consciousness. Um, according to Locke, the self is not necessarily embedded in a single substance or, or a soul, no? But exists in space and time. So, Locke does not have the same belief with with Descartes, with Plato, and with Socrates. So, hindi sila magkapareha. Ang sabi lang niya, the essence of the self is its conscious awareness of itself as a thinking, reasoning, reflecting, and identity. Again, when we say consciousness, it's being aware that we are thinking. The key, the key to understanding the self is our conscious awareness and memory of our previous experiences. No? So, that's why, class, those people na nagkakaroon ng amnesia, diba? it is very um, difficult for them to, uh, to, to identify themselves. No? Because at some point, kapag nawala yung mga memories nila, kapag nawala yung consciousness nila, then basically it's like losing their sense of self then. So, ganoon din um, sa case natin. 
So, for us to have sense of self, then basically, we need to be conscious. We need to have uh, memories of our past deeds. No, and we need to be aware as well of our present actions. Now, every aspect of the physical body is integrated with, of course, personal identity. The body changes, the physical self changes. No, We may not be the same physical person we were five years ago and so on, but we are convinced that our personal identities have remained the same despite these changes in physical substance to our body. So Locke believed that even though our physical body continued to undergo changes, but the fact that we recognize that we are still the same person, then the same person it is. Diba? Locke concluded that one's personal identity is distinct from whatever substance it finds itself associated with. So Locke believed on the uniqueness of every individual. 